beautiful souls and welcome back to channel your lights on your intuitive for those of you who are, who are new here my name is Erin Chandler if you have not done so already please like share and subscribe if you like the content on this channel please add into the comments as well if there's something you wish to discuss I'm thinking of doing Q&A's where you get to ask questions and I will either glean from my own teachings of own your intuitive or if I don't know the answer, I will simply ask for divine guidance to channel that through. In addition, if you feel like you want to have a spiritual expansion which you, where you get to actually have the experiences that you need intuitively in order to have the connections that you want, you may want to check out in the video description box below the details for the spiritual expansion journey, coming home to the self of you and your divine connection and all your spiritual gifts. This is a 21 day guided journey through all 12 dimensions of you, through your 13 chakra energy centers. This is connecting to the divinity within you. This is finding the power within you. You cannot be the same after doing this process as many people who have been through it have described. So. If you're interested in that and you wish to have a divine, the hands of the divine guidance is what I'm hearing my daughter say, the hands of the divine guidance as you move through a spiritual expansion, you can find that in the video description box below. Today, we're actually talking about mediumship. This is really important. Everyone is a medium. The reason I say that everyone is a medium is because being a medium is simply a medium of energy, tapping into a waveform or an energetic frequency. There is a difference between mediumship, which is connecting with your loved ones who have crossed over for the purposes of healing through grief versus mediumship that we do on a daily regular basis where we are offering messages for other people. These are two different facets of mediumship, but they're both mediumship and everyone is a medium. There is no human being on the face of the planet that does not have access to the spirit of their loved ones who have crossed over in some way, shape, or form. It's simply about understanding the capabilities, opening up the abilities, honing it, and cultivating that connection on a regular basis. You are not alone as coming in through that. And I say this from a place of, this is the journey that I had to take in order to open up into those connections and cultivations. And the truth is my friends, mediumship saved my life. Connection with my daughter saved my life. I will share that story on another day, on another episode. If it piques your interest, uh, let me know in the comments if you want to hear about that. It is a wild story and is a miracle in and of itself. It's still shocking to me to this day. So. If we continue on, mediumship. So there's these two facets. There's mediumship to connect with your loved ones past. And then there's the mediumship where you are connecting with other people's deceased loved ones or those in spirit. So there's this concept or idea in the world of mediums. I want to say, I've heard this so many times and it's actually really surprising to me. And I'll explain to you why. Most mediums say, I can't do a mediumship reading for myself or I can connect for guidance for others, but I can't do it for myself. Here's the rock bottom truth about that statement, because it could not be further from the truth. If I can connect with your loved ones, if I can connect with mediumship for you, who is a complete stranger, it's actually easier for me to connect for mediumship and guidance for myself. It is not that as mediums, we cannot access our own guidance or do our own card readings for ourselves. It's that we are attached to outcomes. Think about the people that you serve as a medium. This is clearly for somebody who's a medium on here or understanding mediumship. When I go to a mediumship reading, I usually have a criteria that I explain to them so that they know what to expect and they understand how my energy works so that they can get the most out of the time that we've booked together. One of the things that I always say is, I am going to receive information that may not make complete sense to me, but it's not my life. I don't know you and I don't know your journey. It's not meant to make sense all the time to me. Rather, I am the messenger. I am the one delivering the information that is intended to make sense to you, the recipient of the reading. 
So it may make sense to you, but it will may not make sense to me. I'm simply delivering it in the manner that your loved ones in spirit or your guides wish it to be delivered or even your higher self. Because yes, your higher selves play a part every time you connect intuitively with a medium, with a healer, anybody that works with energy, you are operating or connecting. I'm seeing um, two plugs being put together like this. You are connecting your higher selves on a higher dimensional plane, whether you know this or not. So let's get back to mediumship. So when we talk about the medium of mediumship and not being able to read our own things, as a medium, I'm able to deliver information that I don't even necessarily always understand about that person's life because I am not attached to the outcome of their life. The best mediums are not attached to the outcome of the reading that they give. That's how you can have detached, observant, witnessed energy. The moment we become attached to an energy or attached to an outcome or a desire for something to be a certain way, the information starts to get a little bit skewed or distorted by different perceptions. Perceptions is another thing we're gonna talk about on here, which is very important when we talk about mediumship and the real truth about mediums and perceptions. So if we think about it like this, if I can deliver a reading for somebody because I am not attached to their life, the outcome, it doesn't matter to me whether they stay with their husband or leave their husband. I just know that this is the information that's being given to you. Now think about it. If I'm a medium and I can't do that for myself, it's not because I can't. It's because I can. However, I am attached to certain things that I want to be a certain way in my life. I don't want that tower moment to happen over there, or I don't want the trajectory that is coming out in the cards. Sometimes it's the dominant energy that's being read. It's not, and it's the dominant energy in the moment, or they're meant to be prescriptive, not predictive. That's because right here in this moment, right now, sure, if I continue on the trajectory that I am on, and I do not change my thought forms, and I do not elevate, and I do not make specific choices, that's going to be the outcome. So the very idea that I can do a reading for somebody else, but I cannot do it for myself, is an indicator that there is a place within me that either A, I am unwilling to look, B, I am denying within myself, or C, I do not have clarity within my own energy because I am attached to outcomes, or D, yes, there's a D, potentially I've got everybody else's wishes, desires, and manifestations mucking up my energy field. When somebody says, I can't do a reading for myself, it's immediate. Yes, you can. You're just attached to the outcomes or you don't trust it within yourself or the information gets screwed. Let's change the paradigm. You most definitely can do a reading for yourself. Think about it as a medium. What are we teaching? Self-trust, your intuitive guidance system. So for me as a medium to say, I can't do a reading for myself, but I can do it for everybody else is kind of, it just doesn't make logical sense. Um, this is important based on doing mediumship for myself through my journey of healing grief when my daughter passed away. That was an intrinsic part of it. But then there's also a totally different facet of mediumship that is required to cultivate, to do all of these different uh, lessons, ideas, concepts, divining in information for mediumship when we do it for other people. It doesn't matter if I do it for myself or other people. The only reason I can do it for other people is because I can do it for myself. Whereas most mediums and people in the intuitive realms, and I don't wanna paint a picture that everybody's like this, and being Avis telling me, we're highlighting some of the things that are limiting beliefs for those who have high intuitive gifts. None of this is a judgment. She is saying, this is to highlight for you that you are capable of more. You have the ability to tap into more and your gifts are opening further. You all must trust yourself and recognize the idea that I can do it for you, but not for myself is a limiting belief rampant through many spiritual communities and intuitive teachings. This is only true if you are attached to outcomes. This is only true if you decide that it is true. Ooh, thank you, Ava. 
you're welcome, she says. <laughs> so don't, please don't view this as, as a judgment because I too myself have been through this process telling myself that I, I can't do a reading for myself because it doesn't make sense. But the truth is, is I was attached to outcomes. I didn't want to see what was in front of me. I didn't want to fix something that was broken. Uh, I didn't want to identify those. All of these things are places I've been on on the journey, whether it's through mediumship, for healing for myself in connection to the divinity within me, and also moving forward into mediumship for others. These are facets that we have to understand when we open to the intuitive realms. Because when you open to the intuitive realms, there is a lot of stuff there, my friends. When I say a lot of stuff, there's a lot of places we can get lost. There's a lot of pitfalls. There's a lot of traps. There's a lot of things that still limit us in those intuitive realms. Do you see truth in intuitive realms? Yes, you do. That's part of the reason why the world does not want us to think for ourselves or tap into our third eye or our crown or open up to all of those beautiful facets that exist within all of us. They simply got to be tuned in, turned on, turned up, but do not limit yourself as an intuitive or a medium. One, that you can do it for others, but not for yourself. Get clear in your energy. You can do it better for you than anybody else. Stop and think about that. I can do it better for me than anyone else because I, Eva says it's also about self-awareness, being able to identify if it is a limiting belief. When we say all teachers are asked to be standing up at this time, we mean all teachers from all facets, all forms, all races, all teachings, everything. They're all a piece of the puzzle. We need all of them. And it begins within each of us as, I don't know why we're going on about teachers, but we are. As teachers, it begins within us. How can I, as a teacher, say, I can do all these things for you, but I can't do it for myself. It's actually the opposite. We're supposed to be doing it for ourselves and then it outlays for other people. Sometimes we have the opposite journey. I'm being told somebody on here, you've had the opposite journey through doing it for others is how you healed yourself. So the truth about mediumship that you can't do a reading for yourself is a self-limiting belief based on, uh, I'm hearing you've got to have faith in yourself. If you can do it for others and people you don't even know, darn it, your heart is so connected. There are so many jewels and diamonds and pearls and all these beautiful, wonderful things that exist when we step into doing it for ourselves and understanding and differentiating we have a dominant energy. <laughs> Sometimes we're like, I don't like that answer. So I'm going to ask again, can I get a signier sign is what I'm hearing. Can I get this? It has nothing to do with needing a signier sign. It's actually about addressing the doubt that is within you. You cannot trust your signs and you cannot trust your own guidance. If you do not trust you, there's another video about that trusting your guidance or your intuition. It's about you. It's, it's always been about you. Always. It's always been about me on my journey and my internal landscape. The whole purpose of identifying this limiting belief for anyone that's a medium, not all of you have this. Most of you are more than capable of doing this for yourselves and you do it all the time as I do. It is a beautiful thing when you get together with other intuitives and you have all these wonderful, beautiful validations and synchronicities. I am not saying that you should never rely on anybody else's guidance or take anything like that. No, you need to be able to trust your own guidance and know when wise guidance has shown up with another piece of your puzzle or a confirmation of something that you were just thinking, which is your green light, says the Planetary Commission, to tell you to keep going down that trajectory. You had this intuitive knowing. There's this external validation of another intuitive that just showed up. Keep going. You're on the right track is what that's intended for. And I don't know why, but I'm being shown uh, somebody, there's a hook. It's like, these are hooks. I can do this for other people, but I can't do it for myself. They're hooks. And I want to say hooks like limiting beliefs, the ability to differentiate yourself, self-awareness, spiritual realms, and any limiting beliefs that you have only opens you further. And I realize as I say that, that I'm actually um, putting together multiple different pieces from multiple different teachings based on the um, energetic pathway or the medium or frequency that you're using 
to tap into the intuitive realms because being able to differentiate those things is also valuable as well, particularly for those of you who have opened up your gifts and you're just like, wow, this is crazy. I can hear, I can see, I can feel. There's all these things you're experiencing. The ability to ground and differentiate between all of those different facets and how do we differentiate and do those things? It's through self-awareness. So if I'm a medium and I say, I can't do readings for me, but I can do readings for anybody else. I can connect for anybody else, but I can't connect with my own loved ones. Stop and think about what, what's just been said, right? It's about you. It's about your divine connection within you. It, it literally comes back around to being self-aware. One may say my self-awareness is that I cannot do it for myself. And I wish to challenge that. And here's why I wish to challenge that. How can you give to others what you do not have within yourself? How can I teach others if I have not learned it myself? How can I tap into a, this is selective mediumship is what I'm hearing. Ava saying it's called selective mediumship, mom, to put it in logical, tangible 3D terms. It's selective mediumship. Yes, I can connect with this on this level but I can't connect on that level. Yes, I can connect with this, but I cannot connect with that. And it's actually based on an internal landscape, an internal limiting belief, an internal ide ideation. It's giving away your power and you're in your full power, my friends, when you're in your divinity and you know the capabilities and the skills that you have within you, that's when you're in your full power, when you are trusting your divine guidance. How can I get guidance for others and trust it. If I don't trust the guidance for myself, this is always an awareness pushing you back into yourself. Self-awareness is the beginning of everything when it comes to the intuitive realms. It's the beginning of everything through the experience of this journey. It's how we differentiate what's mine and what's yours. Where's my energetic boundary? Who am I connecting with in spirit? Is that a guide? Is this for my highest good or is this not for my highest good? How do you make decisions on a daily basis? It's from this internal landscape, the whole concept of mediumship and I can do it for other people, but I can't do it for myself. It, it, I wish to literally bust down this door for you, for whoever this message is for. Not only can you do it for yourself, you are powerful, extremely powerful. I wanna swear, not that the swearing is powerful, but really to hit it home because whoever this message is for, I feel like you, Swear. And that's okay. That's also not a judgment. I swear too. But I'm being very specifically told, let's bust down this door, which is a limiting belief and concept that you cannot do it for yourself because you can. And the very clear indicator that you can is because you do it for other people. If you're a healer for other people, you can heal yourself. In fact, that's the very first thing you should heal. And the reason why you move on your journey even though some of us do it in the opposite way. That's okay too. Everybody has a slightly different path. All roads lead home. There's just this point and this piece where I feel like telling you, you have to trust yourself. You have to know that you can do this. And I'm hearing somebody say, I do trust myself that I can't give myself clear guidance because I'm attached to an outcome. And that's why I go to other people, which is fine. But perhaps the lesson um, furthering this more. I don't know why, but it's just like they're pulling this out almost like uh, let's unfurl this completely and entirely. And Ava says, laying all the cards, whoops. Ava says, laying all the cards on the table. So what if it is my, my knowing is that I can't do this for myself because I'm attached to an outcome. And that's why I go to other people and rely on them for guidance. But isn't the lesson you're attached to outcomes, which means you need to learn to detach therefore that is no longer required and as you detach from outcomes everything becomes clearer because you're no longer attached to it do you see how all this just interweaves together it all interweaves together it's a beautiful thing absolutely beautiful friends i trust that this message reaches who it needs i know that for me on my journey the moment i started learning learning these different underpinnings, facets, and foundations of mediumship for myself, and then teaching them for other people, they literally changed 
how I operated on an intuitive realm. And it did nothing but empower me and expand out further. So I will leave that with you. If you wish to join us for the 21 day spiritual expansion, yes, you are going to be accessing your abilities in some way, shape or form. You are going to be connecting with your spirit guides, your spirit animals, the divine mother of all creation, mother, father, God, your higher self, your past lives. We cover a lot in this and it is life-changing. So I would love for you to join us if that piques your interest or you feel drawn or called to it. As always, I am sending you much love, light, peace, healing, and transcendence. Until next time, beautiful souls.